Nathaniel here, and welcome to another episode of uh, a little bit of data science and scikit-learn. We learned just a little bit of data science and a whole lot of scikit-learn. Today we're going over pre-processing data. So there's a lot of it. Um, so let's just get started. Uh, the simplest type of pre-processing that you can think of, so this is when we get our data, we want to make it usable for a machine learning algorithm. Simplest kind is making our data zero mean with unit variance, so variance equal to one. Um, simple way that you can do this is with preprocessing dot scale. So scikit-learn preprocessing dot scale. So let's go ahead and do it. Uh, you can notice it's uh, zero mean unit variance. Does have some drawbacks. Uh, so if you get a new sample, right? If you get a single test sample, and you're asked to make this uh, zero mean unit variance. How do you do that? It's like very hard. <laughs> um, so, uh, so generally, generally what's done is you'll go ahead and use your, your training examples um, and you'll make this training example, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll literally train an estimator to, to, to scale your test examples using, using your training examples. So we've got the standard scaler, preprocessing.standardscaler, um, and this will make an estimator, scikit-learn estimator, where you can use fit. Um, Sums with a lot of things. You can check out the means of each of your columns, the scales of each of your columns, and it has a native transform method. Um, so this can transform anything. Um, you can even scale these features to a range using the min-match feature scaler. So initially it's, it's from 0 to 1. So this will go ahead and add some stuff to it and then scale it down. Um, you can normalize. Uh, so what this means is that each, each of your samples um, is, is going to have uh, unit uh, norms, so in this case uh, unit L2 norm. So if you square each of these and sum them up, they'll, they'll sum to 1. Uh, obviously if you square each of these and, and sum them up, they'll square to 1. That makes perfect sense. And this is sometimes useful if you want to have like, um, so for example in the, in the Netflix prize they, they had done this. Uh, you you want to have vectors that, that all sort of sum to 1 so you can sort of weight equally along each of the categories. Um, Again, this is annoying to do. Um, uh, if you were trying to take this from uh, training to testing, so uh, they, they've got this, the classic estimator, so they have a preprocessing dot normalizer that can transform uh, the training data as well as the testing data. You can binarize your data. You make it 0 and 1. Uh, this basically just uses a threshold. Uh, threshold is 0, 0.0 to begin with. A uh, threshold you can change to 1.1 or something like that. You can check out all this code. I've got a link to it at the bottom. You can do one-hot encoding. So, for example, this. Uh, so, you know, I, I gave a, gave a little example up here. Um, a person could have features such as male, female from Europe, from USA, from Asia uses Firefox, Chrome, Safari, Internet Explorer, and uh, I can encode all those features as this sort of like uh, this array of three digits. And so, this guy is uh, a guy. This is a girl. This is a guy. This is a girl. This is from Europe, uh, United States. Uh, Asia, Europe, um, and, and you can sort of go on and do this. And so you can encode these guys all into just a single uh, one-hot array. Um, it's easier for machine learning algorithms to deal with, except for like random force. Um, you can impute missing values. So if you've got some NANs, you can go ahead and fill them in. Um, so in this case, uh, you just need to set the strategy. We can just uh, use mean. Um, and so uh, I don't know, I've got some missing values. Uh, I've got a lot of missing values. So right here, this guy. Um, and right here, this guy, missing values. And they're, and they're filled in using the strategy of mean. So um, You can generate polynomial features. Um, so this is interesting, they'll even include the interactions. Um, so they'll go ahead and they'll generate a um, sort of like a unit feature. Uh, so so this, guy, this guy is just the intercept. Uh, so this guy is the first one, first one, first one, um, second one, second one, second one, first one squared, uh, first one times second one, second one squared. Uh, so you can generate second order polynomial features that way. Um, you can even change your targets. Um, so in this case, label binarizer. Uh, this basically just takes the labels as we previously seen them um, and makes them into one hot encodings. This is for labels. Uh, so somewhat useful. Uh, you can look at what classes they originally were there. Um, 
Uh, label encoder is a utility to help normalize labels so they can only contain values between 0 and n minus 1 classes. Uh, this, this can be sometimes useful for Cython routines. I just decided to include it. I've never used this before. Maybe, maybe you guys will. Um, it's somewhat cool. I mean, I guess it, it makes this 1, 2, 2, 6 uh, into 0, 1, and 2. Uh, and then, of course, you can write your own custom transformer. So a custom transformer could be like... Uh, we'll take uh, the log uh, 1p, which is actually, uh, let, me, let me check what this is, mp.log 1p, uh, ah, the natural logarithm. Um, so, anyways, uh, <laughs> I, I hope you've enjoyed this. I mean, you know, um, some of these are useful. I mean, I've certainly used, um, I've not used generating polynomial features before. I mean, this is mostly because I use Patsy um, in order to do this. That being said, you, you can do it with scikit-learn as well. Uh, imputation of missing values can be super useful. Um, yeah, very much so. Uh, encoding categorical features, very, very useful. And then, I mean, uh, it's the standardization, uh, the, the classic, just sort of like um, preprocessing dot standard scalar. These, these are the super useful ones. I mean, I use that every day. Um, okay, uh, thanks a ton. Uh, I think we've got one more planned, so please tune in, uh, and thanks for sticking with it.